Well, good morning, Stamping Friends. Happy Friday to everyone. How are you all doing today? And what do you have planned for the weekend? Father's Day weekend, so hopefully you're making your Father's Day cards. I did post another, um, one of my favorite Father's Day cards that was in the Stampin' Up! catalog. So if you need another idea, um, go ahead and look at my blog and you'll see a really cute um, Father's Day card. But today, um, I don't know, the stamping world is kind of like retail. You always have to be looking ahead and what holiday is coming up. So today we're going to tackle a 4th of July project and it's super easy. I cannot believe how fast it came together. I was um, trying to figure out what I was going to do today and I did all these ones that, oh, they just took a while. I mean, they were, I really liked how they turned out, but they just took so long. And then all of a sudden I thought of, I was um, thinking of the holiday and then this one just came together like in 10 minutes. So I can't wait to share this with you. Um, so uh, first of all, I want to um, remind you of the Stampin' Up! promotion going on. I know I talk about this every time, but it's such a good deal. And you guys with the new catalog, it's just a great time to sign up to be a demonstrator so that you can buy at wholesale prices. So remember, you only have until the end of the month on June 30th, which is let's see, a week and a half, um, then the sale is gonna be over and you get an extra bundle with any kit or with whatever you pick in your kit. The kit is $99, but you get to choose $125 worth of products, your choice of anything. When I signed up, I had to take a pre-packaged thing and it was way more expensive. But anyway, just give it a try. There's really nothing to lose. If, if it's not your cup of tea, then just you know you just drop and nothing happens and you get to keep all your products but if you like it um you know you may want to continue and your discount can only go up from there based on your sales and other things so um you might want to just give it a try so just let me know if you're interested and i can call you or chat or text or whatever and i'd be happy to have you on my team and get you started all right let me turn my little camera around um and this one will be really fast, like I said, because, oh gosh, I have to go to the eye doctor today and get these old eyes checked out. It's so funny, when I first started going, I thought, why do I have to go so often? Why is it every year I have to go and now I get it? Oh my gosh, my eyes have changed so much. So um, I've got to get done in time to do that. All right, let me start by sharing with you where the base of this card is coming from. We are going to use the um, In Good Taste Designer Series paper and oh my goodness I was so excited when I saw this paper in the catalog because when that other wood paper that we had was in there I think I bought five packs of that thing. I went through that because wood is so popular and it's classic and timeless and then um, one catalog we didn't really have it. They, it was in one paper pack but you only got two sheets but anyway in this one I'm just so excited look at this assortment plus all these on the back and then here I have the colors that coordinate with them but it's just an awesome um, paper pack and you get 21 sheets in one pack and they're 12 by 12 and um, the one that we're going to use is this one today it's a wood pattern and it's kind of got um, panels of wood on it and I Put it next to the one that's on the opposite side because some of them look very similar so i want you to make sure that you pick the right one for this project it's the one that has kind of like painted white canvas so that's what's on the back side of that one all right are you ready to see it oh by the way i always put my um host code up here so if you see anything you like i would love it and appreciate it if you ordered from my stampin up website and you can find um that I'll put the links after we're done. And then this is the code that you use and that helps me a lot. Okay, so ready for a simple and easy um, card today? First I get my scrap paper because I forgot we definitely need scrap paper for this. Hold on one second. <laughs> I always forget something and um, so now I'm ready to go. All right, here's our 4th of July card. Isn't that fun? It's just very different. It's very um, 
you know, one layer, although I did pop up the star here, you can see on dimensionals, but I'm gonna show you how to achieve this flag look using this paper. All right, so for starters, I used gray granite cardstock, and it's kind of our standard um, fold, which is a four and a quarter inch piece of paper or cardstock by 11, scored in half at five and a half, and then just fold it in half. And it's sometimes a good idea, whoops, sorry about my arm in the way. Here's my bone folder. Um, to use a bone folder and it just um, helps get that crease really nice and solid. All right, once you do that, you can set that apart. We're gonna build the flag now. All right, where is my flag piece? There it is. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so this is the exact same size as the card front, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. I um, decided to make it the whole card front, and usually I trim it down with a little border. You could do that if you want, but I wanted it just to be the total wood flag look. All right, the next thing you're gonna do is take a post-it note and cut it two and a quarter by two and a quarter. And we're just gonna put that up in the top left corner matching the sides and the top because we don't want to get ink on that part. We're gonna save that for the blue part of our flag. Now, this is where you're gonna need um, paper underneath, otherwise you're gonna make a mess underneath. All right, now take another um, post-it note. I like to use the longer ones because we're gonna need it longer when we move down farther. Now we just wanna find that first um, natural line in the wood. It's like a wood plank. You can barely see it and just cover up that and it'll be a, these are all nice and straight lines. So now you have two post-it notes on here. Now the next thing we're going to do is get our real red ink and um, there's many ways you can color this. You can use a sponge which they look like this from Stampin' Up! and you get packs of three and I like to cut them into six and then I put a little, um, like a little tab on the top so that um, you don't get your fingers inked up and then you can color that way. Or you can use a dauber and these just fit on your finger. And I think you get six in a pack and then um, you just dab it in the ink. But um, I'm sure many of you have seen, there's these blending brushes online and I put the link. Oh, these are so awesome. I think they, blend even a little bit better. You don't get those rough edges. You know, when sometimes you use a dauber, you get circles, you know, like because it's it's a round circle or the sponges give kind of a spongy look, but these are very fine bristles and it, I don't know, it just gives it a really nice look. They're very inexpensive. I think you, they're $11.99 for, I think you get six of them and they have different colored handles. So I just try to stay in the same tone whenever I'm using these. And um, I used pink earlier, and then I just kind of went like this on my paper till the pink was gone, and then now I can use kind of the same tone. I'm using real red. All right, so just ink up your, um, your brush, and then um, just start coloring in here. And you can go in circles like this, or you can go back and forth like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect, because this is kind of roughed up wood, um, very, kind of shabby chic or farmhouse looking. And you can make it as dark or light as you want. I wanna go a little bit darker. So just go back and forth and super simple. All right, and you can see that the masking is preventing us from stamping or um, from going below the line because we want crisp lines on this flag. Okay, now you're gonna lift that up. Look at how nice that edge is. Now we want to skip one because that's the white line. So we're gonna put this right on top of the red that we just inked. We're gonna grab one more post-it note. Whoops, wait a minute. We wanna go over the white because that's what we're skipping. All right, and then this is the one we want red. So we're gonna mark that one off and do the same thing. Ink up your little brush thing Go back and forth or in circles, doesn't really matter. And I just want it nice and red. I was wondering what is even gonna happen for the 4th of July this year because it's just crazy with the virus and the 
um, you know, the rallies going on and probably not going to be too many fireworks, especially here in Arizona because we are so dry and hot. Okay, now we can lift up for both of these. Now we want to skip one to make the white one. So let's put the post-it note on top of the white and then put this one down here because we want this next one red and just follow that line. Now you can see I have a little bit more edge. So this was extra um, post-it note. I'm just gonna slice down the middle so I can make two more small ones just to um, get this part because it's a little bit longer once we pass the um, that blue part up here. All right, um, let's do another red stripe. And I probably should have pre-done one before, but that's all right. I just want you to see how I move the lines all the time. All right, we're getting close to finishing. All right, let's take that one off. Isn't that cool how it makes those stripes? And then I think we only have one more, so we're gonna cover up that white one, put these on. I hope I'm still in the camera. And then follow that bottom line one more time. And just make sure you follow the line. It's hard, probably hard to see on the camera, but there are little lines that follow the palette, the wood palette there. Let's see, I think that's pretty straight. All right, one more stripe here, and we'll get to the blue. All right, almost done. It kind of looks like barn wood, actually. It's kind of a, because real red is kind of a primary color, but on this wood, it makes it look a little bit more burnt red, like a barn red, and I like that because it has more of the feel of, you know, the wood and the farmhouse. All right, there's our flag part with the stripes. Now, we want to remove this upper part that's going to have the, um, or actually let's leave that on because we need to know where to put these post-it notes so that when we lift it, um, it'll be nice and square where this is. So let's mark off that because we can lift that up and take it off eventually. And then this one goes on the bottom because we don't want to get blue ink on what we already inked up with the stripes. Okay, now I'll lift that up. Now, um, for this part, you could put like a star in here. I chose a star, but you could also do a heart. Um, so just use what you have. You know, I would recommend the stitched star um, dies, and unfortunately, I do not have them. If I'd have known <laughs> a week and a half, two weeks ago, I would have ordered them, but I haven't done too many star cards, so I had to go in my stash, and um, the one that, uh, that I do have a star die for, it was way too small for that. So I actually had to go in my stash and I picked a star that I had a punch and this is a Stampin' Up, Stampin Up one from before, but really it doesn't matter what goes here. Um, Be Mine stitched framelits has a nice big heart that you could do, but I'm gonna do the star here for now. So this is just punch from another post-it note we're gonna stick that on there. And this one, we're gonna to have to be a little bit more careful, put it right in the middle, because um, we don't want these edges to lift up when we're inking this one. So the color I chose is Misty Moonlight, which is a new in color. It's gorgeous, I love it. It's lighter than Night of Navy, but um, darker than some of the other blues we have. It's just a really nice blue with a tone that we don't have it all in this, um, in our Stampin' Up! palette. All right, so now I'm inking up another one. I try to match the um, colors of ink that I use with the handle. So let's just go right on top of this. And um, this one I wanna make nice and dark. If you don't have Misty Moonlight, you could use um, Night of Navy as well, but I wanted to use this one and I'll tell you why in a second when, we, when I get to the stamping part. See how it's kind of lifting there? If you have removable tape, you may want to 
tape down some of these edges because you definitely don't want to get underneath there. Okay, I just want it a little bit darker, so let's go a little bit more. And um, we're gonna do one more thing that's gonna pop it up at the end. Oh, look how inky my hands are. <laughs> this can be a little messy, but it's worth it. You can put rubber, rubber gloves on if you want it. All right, I think that's good. Now, lift that up and there is your blue part of the star. All right, and then you can go ahead and lift this up as well. Now, glad I'm not using white paper, right? <laughs> this would be a smudged up um, card. That always happens when I use white. Okay, now we are just gonna adhere this to the front of the card. And yep, I'm still using my snail. I need to use that the new tape, but I'm trying to use up some of my old ones here. All right, this is gonna fit perfectly on the front, so just stick that right on there like that. Oops. Oh, I didn't get it straight. It is hard from this angle to see where straight is. All right, we're gonna pull the whole thing off and start over. There we go. Okay, now, one last little, or a couple more things I wanted to show you. Um, I kept looking at this saying, oh, I like this, I like the card, but it just needs a little bit of dimension. So what I did was I took a scrap of the same paper, and there's actually a pattern on here. So I kind of matched up, let's see, looks like this is where it was. And I'm gonna stick my punch in here and um, I'm going to punch out the same spot that I did here. Like, just try to match that up. Um, whoops, let's see. It is this way. So it's about like that. See where that dark stripe is there? I'm going to try to make it look exactly there. And then just punch it out. Now, if you had a die cut, you wouldn't even have to do what I did. You would literally die cut the st um, star or heart, whatever you did, before you put it on the card front, just cut it out right from there. I can't do it from here because this punch will not reach in there. That's why I had to grab another piece of paper. But it's even easier if you die cut it. Just literally die cut it before you put it on the um, card front. Otherwise, if you do it now, you're gonna have a hole in your card. And then we'll just take some dimensionals and um, I think one big one on the back will work for mine. And this is just gonna give it a little bit of um, dimension so that it's not so flat. And you probably can't see it from there, but it's standing up now. All right, one more little thing. Because it's kind of a farmhousey look, let's put a little bit of baker's twine on here. So I'm just gonna wrap it around twice. And don't worry about where it lands because we're gonna adjust it later. Okay, so when you tie a bow, one thing that's hard about tying bows is when you get it going to tie it in a bow, it usually loosens here as you're trying to make the loop and stuff. So what I do is I tie it once, put my finger on that and hold it down so it doesn't get loose and then tie it in a knot because with linen thread, it's not going to get um, too bulky because it's so thin. All right, now we'll start adjusting it. If you bend your card a little bit, you can move the, the um, thread around a little bit better. And oh, I want these to separate up here. Well, let's do the bow and then I'll adjust it. Now we can easily make the bow. We don't have to worry about holding it because it's already in a knot secured. And, mm -hmm. oh my nails even match and by the way i forgot to mention i had a red white and blue shirt on and that was in honor of the card we're making today <laughs> oh boy this shirt will never wear out because i only wear it like for two weeks over the holiday break and then it, i never wear it again all right pull the loops a little bit lower then let's trim it down a little bit so it doesn't stick so long and now we can adjust these side things Whenever I go around twice, I like them to cross a little bit somewhere. So just bend your card so it moves easier. 
and then the bottom let's just spread those apart a little bit there we go all right so there is our card isn't that fun and then you could put um, a white sheet in there and oh I got one more part I forgot and I'm excited to show you if you don't have a stamparatus this tool is a must-have we just need to stamp a little saying on this and we don't have any happy 4th of July, so I pulled out So Much Happy, which is a new stamp set, and um, oh, I love this one. Um, so they have really nice sayings. They have a die that goes with it, which I'm going to show you later on um, in another video. But to get us started, I love the font, how it's the hand print or the handwriting one. So. I'm going to put it on the Stamparatus, and this tool is so awesome, especially if you need a second chance. Like if you um, stamp and it didn't stamp well, you can re-stamp it again because the positioning won't change. All right, so let's get the empty card. We don't want to re-stamp the done one. And here's my little magnet. I put a um, little bit of painter's tape on here because it's easier to pick up if it has a little handle like that. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is, I want the celebrate word, so I'm gonna place that where I want the celebrate, and don't worry about the other words because we're not gonna stamp that, and just make sure it's straight. And then, all you do is put this hinge plastic, or acrylic um, frame down like that, and it's gonna pick up the stamp because this has sticky stuff on the back. Now, we're only going to color the word celebrate, and you have to use a stamp and write marker. You cannot use blends. Believe me, because I tried that first, it dries so fast. So when I colored it and then stamped, no ink came off. Plus, the ink sticks on the stamp, and it's hard to get off. I had to use stays on cleaner to get it off. So take it from me, it does not work. <laughs> you have to use a stamp and write marker. And because my um, Knight of Navy is dry, otherwise I might have used that if you wanted a little bit darker, but actually I kept going over it, it's pretty dark. But the new um, markers come five in a pack and so that's why I chose this. So let's just color in the word celebrate. Try not to get it on the, the um, parts above and below the words because then you'll have, I call them ultrasounds when you have an extra little blop of, um, <laughs> of ink on there. And then it should be right in the spot where you need it. So let me flatten that out. So just press down. And if you wanted it darker, I mean, it turned out really well. I wouldn't have to do this, but look at, you can ink it up again and, and um, it'll land right in the exact same spot. And that's what's so awesome about this tool. So I'll have the link that, to this as well. So let's just go again and get it one shade darker. All right, we have a completed card here now. <laughs> so let me know if you like this. Very simple and um, just a really fun card and um, you can get going on your 4th of July projects and send them to your family and friends. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And remember, I do Facebook Lives on Tuesday and Friday mornings. So I hope you join me. And I always forget to mention this. Please um, subscribe to my YouTube channel after I load this because I really want to switch to YouTube Lives because behind the scenes there's a lot of... Um, uploading and extra steps I have to do. So if I can do Facebook or YouTube Live, it's a lot easier. So please, please, please subscribe there. I'm also almost at a thousand subscribers and then YouTube allows me to do it. So thank you again and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.